if you're hunting for a job and not having luck, you're not imagining it, it's actually getting harder to find a job now. And stick around because in this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly why. Hey everybody, it's Brian from A Life After Layoff and today I wanna to talk about the state of the hiring market. And if you're hunting for a job, it does seem quite frustrating right now. And to be honest with you, this is one of the more challenging labor markets that we've experienced. I'm not sure if I'm quite ready to announce that we're a point this one more difficult than we experienced in 2020, but it's sure seeming like that for a lot of job seekers, especially when I look at my LinkedIn profile, scroll through my feed, and I see so many people applying for hundreds and hundreds of jobs without a whole lot of success. Because the reality is the job market has changed significantly in the last 12 to 18 months. And man, it's a whiplash back and forth. So in this video, I wanna break down a few reasons why that's actually happening. And yeah, you're not imagining it. It is definitely harder to get a job today than it was this time last year. But before we get too far into this video, if you're interested in learning how to take back control in your career, make sure you sign up for my free weekly newsletter. And in it, I give you weekly actionable tips that you can apply to start acting like the CEO of your career. So if you're interested in supercharging things and unlocking your potential, make sure you sign up for it. So the inspiration for this video is A, I've been thinking a lot about this and I do a lot of perusing of LinkedIn and Twitter in particular, and I try to keep a pulse on what's going on in the labor market. I actually came across a really interesting article on time.com, which describes a lot of the same things that I've been speaking about on this channel and on my LinkedIn profile. And I'll leave a link for the article in case you're interested in checking it out. And essentially what it says is what I've been feeling that this is not an easy time to be a job seeker. Certainly not recommended that you quit your job at this point in time unless you've got a very defined strategy because a lot of job seekers are finding out the hard way that things aren't quite as they were 18 months ago. And this is particularly jarring for people who the last time they looked for a job was maybe they participated in the great resignation and it was at the heyday and employers were just throwing buckets of cash at everybody to jump from job to job to job. And at that time, it just seemed like the gravy train. And then those same people who got these big salaries suddenly found themselves quickly on the other side of things with getting layoffs. And they were targeted because of those big salaries, among other reasons. And now they're back in the open market thinking that maybe it would be the same as it was the last time. And unfortunately, the reality is that it just isn't. And I do speak a lot about this employment pendulum that swings back and forth where the power resides. And Last year, it was definitely with the employee. It was kind of the first time in a long time where we felt like we actually had some power and we could kind of dictate the terms and kind of reclaim some of the imbalance that we've been seeing over the years. But the pendulum is certainly swinging back in the other direction. Employers are slowing down their hiring, of course, all of the layoffs that have been happening. And I think we haven't seen the end of it, unfortunately. I do think we're gonna to continue to see it spilling into the second half of 2023. We may see an uptick in layoffs that are outside of what has seemed to be mostly in the tech space. And obviously what has happened now is that we have a lot more competition coming into the market. You certainly have increased competition and in certain jobs have been hit harder than others in the tech space, which is kind of obvious. We've got a lot of, I see a lot of product managers, a lot of certainly software developers and other people associated with those technology related roles. And these are a lot of the people who, when they jumped from job to job to job in the last you know 18 months or so and got these big pay raises, it was kind of very short lived. Same thing goes with recruiters. They've been hit very hard. It was, a, it was a heyday for recruiting for about five minutes. It seemed like if you were a recruiter, you couldn't trip over five or six job offers where you were making forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 more than your previous job. and and it was really a nice time to be a recruiter. And again, it only seemed to last for five minutes because they were the last ones hired, the first ones fired. And now you've got this huge glut of certain people in the job market. So if you're somebody that's in human resources, if you're in somebody that's in uh, recruiting, if you're somebody that's in tech, especially those spaces, you're finding that now there are hundreds, if not thousands of applicants for roles where before companies couldn't find enough candidates. So that dynamic has completely changed. And it's a very frustrating and difficult time to be a job seeker, especially in one of those verticals. One of the other things that has come out of this whole dynamic shift or this whole paring down, especially in talent acquisition is now you don't have nearly as many recruiters recruiting. So you've got a lot of that burden. The hiring burden has shifted over to the hiring manager who has their own plate. Their team has been pared down. They've got the same amount of work, but they've got less people to do it. And now they have to do all the recruiting too. And a lot of them are finding out that recruiting itself is a full-time job and you're seeing slower hiring processes as a result. You're seeing, unfortunately, an increase in 
kind of poor processes because there's just nobody there to facilitate it. I know that people have their own opinion about recruiters and how they all stink. And I agree to some level that there are some bad recruiting processes and some bad recruiters. I've talked about that kind of extensively on my channel, but at the end of the day, the recruiter is still an advocate for the hiring process. You've got somebody that is managing people through a process. And when you turn it over to a hiring manager or to some overloaded HR person who maybe survived one of these layoff rounds, the process is going to slow to a, come almost to a halt. And certainly things like smooth scheduling of interviews, moving through processes quickly, getting feedback on your interviews, all of those things have made it much more difficult for the average job seeker because now you just don't have a dedicated resource to it. And these hiring managers just, they're, hey, they're not trained on how to do this stuff. And they, let's face it, they probably don't even want to do it to begin with, but that's the reality of today's job market. So that part has slowed down quite a bit. In addition to that, companies have slowed down their hiring period with hiring freezes. There are so many jobs that there's an intent to get the job filled. And then as they're moving candidates through a process, suddenly the company shifts gears, puts the job on hold or pause and reevaluates their hiring decisions. I can't tell you how many people I've seen that have accepted job offers, tendered a resignation, or finally got excited to get off the unemployment line. And a day or two before their job is supposed to start, they get a call and the offer is rescinded. And we're seeing that happening quite a bit more frequently. And that's very alarming and disconcerting to the average job seeker. So in general, employers have been slower to make hiring decisions because they're still looking at how the market is going to shape up. And if we're heading into a recession, there are some pundits that we're saying that we are, if we're heading into a recession, I think a lot of employers are reluctant to add a lot of expensive costs in the form of big salaries and maybe launching new products as they wait and kind of see what's going to happen in the economy. So you're getting a lot more carefully planned out hiring and almost cautiousness in the employment market. At least that's what I'm sensing. So in addition to that, we have this dynamic of AI that has just come screaming into the workforce. And you've got all these companies that are taking a long, hard look at how will AI affect our workforce? And there's companies that are actively looking to replace their workers with AI. And so in a lot of cases, a rec that may have been open six months ago, you now have a company pumping the brakes and saying like, hey, is there another way that we can approach some of this work and kind of distribute it and re, re kind of reshape how our workforce looks? And a lot of employers, that's a really attractive thing because an AI robot is a lot cheaper and can work 24 hours a day and probably output three, four, five times the amount that a human being could. Of course, you lack the creativity and you lack the independent decision making and all that stuff. I mean, that's a debate for another video. But nonetheless, employers are looking at this stuff. And if you don't think they are, you're being naive. And if you don't think that they're coming for your job or looking at your job, <laughs> then you're being really naive. And that's the reality. And that's contributing to some of these employers pumping the brakes on this hiring. So it's making hiring harder. In addition to that, and then this is directly in a recruiting space, you have companies now that are looking for ways to leverage or automate a kind of out of necessity. They laid off all their, their recruiters and now they have nobody to do all that work. So they're now starting to automate more of these processes. So when you're a job seeker, you now are probably dealing more and more with AI as you're going through the application process, it becomes more impersonal. You're probably getting more rejections as a result because it's much more a or B, ones or zeros. It's like you either have it or you don't. It's it's black and white. There's no interpretation there. And I know a lot of people say, oh, recruiters aren't worth anything. It's great that we have AI. There won't be any biases. And that's actually, Amazon actually found out that that's not true, but there's no interpretation of. And if you're somebody that is trying to move into a new industry type or a new job type or ch changing careers or whatever the case might be, you're, you have to kind of rely on somebody giving you a chance. You need a, a human interpretation of your skill set and be able to say like, hey, maybe I see something in this that it's not obvious, but we could work with. And when you're dealing with a robot, an AI system, it's, it's just black and white. You either have the criteria, you don't, and you're filtered either way. And that's not necessarily advantageous for the job seeker. And that's probably going to contribute to you getting more rejection letters. In addition to it, we also are seeing companies that are forcing this return to the office. And as we see this, it almost seems like there's a war on the remote worker and companies are becoming much more vocal and much more bold about it. And 
You have some employees trying to rebel, but, but at the end of the day, if you're not signing your own paycheck, you're not controlling that dynamic and it's probably gonna be a battle that you're gonna lose. At best, I think you can expect a hybrid work model as, as probably a win for the average remote worker, but you can expect if you're a remote worker that those days may be coming to an end or at least drastically being cut down. And the disadvantage for the job seeker is if you move to an area that doesn't have a lot of job opportunities and you were relying on remote work, it might be much more difficult now to try to find remote work. Whereas two years ago, every job was remote and it was great. And if you think about the implications there, if you're working remotely and suddenly the company shifts to even a hybrid model, that means that you either gonna have to drastically change your lifestyle and your schedule and dealing with things like daycare and all those kind of criteria that, that probably employers aren't really thinking about or like, let's be honest, probably aren't caring a whole lot about, but that might also necessitate, if you moved away from the city or if you moved a few states away because you could, suddenly you're scrambling to try to figure out a plan B. And, and especially if you live in a pretty rural area that doesn't have a lot of those job opportunities, now suddenly you're forced with making some very difficult decisions. And certainly the job opportunities that you would you know, qualify for now are gonna be drastically reduced. And so in that regard, being a remote employee is probably not nearly as attractive as it maybe was you know, 18 months ago. I don't think that there's going to be a, an end to remote work. I think that there's just going to be a lot more companies that are going to be adopting a hybrid model. So that might be a strategic decision that you need to make if you want to go back to work and get back to work quickly is you might have to be located where the work is, even if it is on a hybrid basis. But nonetheless, that makes it more difficult for the average job seeker who is relying on more opportunities because companies adopted this remote first work across the board and that's just kind of going away. And in addition to all of this, the actual candidate experience has gotten worse because the same reasons I spoke about before, we've got AI handling a lot of the screening processes and it's not just even with the application or the screening of the application, it's actually even getting into the interview process. You might even be interviewing with a, a robot for your next first round interview because a lot of companies are starting to look at that as another option. Hey, I'm Jack, one of Synthesia's stock AI avatars. I'm looking forward to helping you create videos. Hey, I'm Matt, one of Synthesia's stock AI avatars. I'm looking forward to helping you create videos. Hey, I'm Paige, one of Synthesia's stock AI avatars. I'm looking forward to helping you create videos or at the very least, they're making it much more impersonal where you're seeing an increase in these one way, these video interviews where you're basically speaking to a camera with no person on the other side and it gets sent off to somebody who knows who, who assesses it. And that might actually go through an AI system where it's looking for certain keywords that you have to say and then filtering it. I, I'm honestly not sure how that's gonna work on the back end because I've never used one way interviewing before, but it's still impersonal and you're still being graded on something that you can't even get the feedback from another human because it's basically you'll you'll never engage with anybody until maybe you get into the the um, panel interview process i'm not sure but the reality of it is is that there are less decent jobs and there's more people looking for them. And in fact, it's taking longer on average for a person to find a job in today's market. There was a study done by LinkedIn where they found that the average job seeker is applying to 40% more jobs today than they were a year ago at this time. So that means that you're applying to 40% more jobs, having less opportunities and still getting rejected. Plus there's more candidates applying to these positions. So it's just a difficult labor market. And it's um, one that can be very frustrating and disheartening if you found yourself unfortunately on the raw end of a, a layoff. So I implore people who are gainfully employed today to start taking the steps necessary to protect yourself. Because if your name gets called next, you don't wanna be unprepared going into this because it's not a great time to look for a job. But the good news is that you can approach your job search in a more authoritative manner. I like to think that you're getting an insider's edge by following along this channel and utilizing all the tools that I provide. But the reality is, is that you do need an advantage if you're a job seeker in today's market. You do need to start looking at how can you present yourself with more strength 
because there's a lot more competition out there right now. So that's where learning how to write that resume becomes so important. I mean, it's such a critical skill that you will need in order to set yourself apart from the crowd. Because I see almost every day somebody posting on LinkedIn saying, I've applied to a thousand different jobs. I haven't gotten any responses. I'm just completely frustrated and defeated. And I don't know what to do. If you're that person, it can be very defeating. It's almost like you go in this vicious spiral down where now you're just applying to everything and anything out of desperation. You're actually making yourself even a weaker candidate in that regard. You're not customizing anything. You're not tailoring anything. You're just literally spraying and praying out of literally out of sheer desperation at that point. And that's just not a winning strategy. So I implore you learn how to write the resume because if you write a really solid resume, you can skip in front of the line because listen, so few people are doing that when they apply to these jobs. I spent a lot of my career on the hiring side looking at the applications that come in. And I'm, I'm telling you, out of 100 applications, if I get three or four job applications that are like really good fits, I'm pretty shocked. So if you take the time to learn how to write a resume that's actually effective, you are gonna be able to cut in front of a lot of those people and cut the huge odds down from hundreds if not thousands down to a manageable number and you can give yourself a fighting chance. It doesn't mean that you're automatically going to get into every interview process. It's not realistic, but we want to try to improve our odds the best we can, especially given our own background. The same thing goes for your interviewing process. If you're lucky enough to land an interview with a high quality employer, you certainly don't want to mess it up. So you better know what you're doing and you better have a firm strategy in place on how to get through each round of the interview because in today's market, Maybe in the past you would have two or three decent candidates, but now you've got 10, 15, 20 decent candidates just because there's a huge volume of people. And you have to be able to stand out from the crowd. You have to be able to expertly negotiate your way through those interview processes so that you can end up with an offer that's reasonable. And I'd encourage you if you're weak on interviewing skill and you don't really know why you're interviewing and what you're interviewing for and how to approach the interviewing process with authority, that's another skill that you wanna learn. And I actually created a course called the Ultimate Job Seeker Bootcamp that breaks this all down in a ton of detail and gets you to the offer and gives you all the tools necessary to make sure you don't leave a dime on the table. But the best way to find a job in today's market is to have the recruiter start to come and find you. And if you're not having your phone ringing or you're not having your LinkedIn inbox being hit up by recruiters for good quality opportunities, that's an area where you might want to focus on improving because it is much more preferable to get the recruiter to come to you than for you to send out your application to them and praying that somebody takes notice and praying that the AI system that's now being implemented takes notice and takes pity on you. So if we can get that recruiter to come and find us, we can skip by all of that. And in a lot of cases, you can actually go right past the recruiter and into the interview process of the hiring manager if you know what, really know what you're doing. I actually created a course called Unlocking LinkedIn, which teaches you exactly how to do that and develop a profile and get recruiters to start noticing you. And more importantly, get past the recruiter altogether. Like, listen, I want you to skip me. It saves me the time and it gets you into the interview process. And I still get credit for the hire, so I don't care. So learn how to skip me. I'm a gatekeeper. That's my job is to gatekeep and try to find the right candidates for the business. Not, not the other way around. I made a video about that you can check out. But check out the course Unlocking LinkedIn if you're struggling. But the moral of the story here is, is if you're struggling in your job search, and you know, it's, again, it's, this is not an easy time to be looking for a job, get the tools necessary to give yourself a competitive advantage over the competition because if you're not doing it, somebody else is. So that's my, my soapbox. I'll get off of it now. But hopefully you found some value in this video. I think that this is a uh, an interesting time to be a job seeker. It's been a fascinating last two and a half years, just kind of the pendulum swinging back and forth. But uh, nonetheless, we can get through this together. I'm here to help you. And as always, appreciate you watching and we'll see you on the next one.